Hello, and welcome to your weekly message from First Congregational Church, Milford, New Hampshire. I'm your pastor and hopeless Red Sox fan, Al Hoyt. The reason for all the accoutrement is that yesterday was the first training day for pitchers and catchers. They reported to Florida earlier in the week, and they started their training yesterday. Let's keep our fingers crossed for this season. This Sunday, February 21st, is the first Sunday of Lent. Our virtual ch church service will be, link will go out right around 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. Right after that, you'll get a link for our virtual coffee hour, which will be at 1130. Please make an effort to join us for that coffee hour. It's a lot of fun. We learn a lot. We get to chat with people we haven't seen in quite a while. And I hope you'll take advantage of it. Every week, one or two new people pop in, and it's always fun to see people we haven't seen in a long time. At 12.30, the Board of Christian Education will be meeting. On Wednesday, February 24th, we'll have our first ever Zoom Lenten Bible study. You'll get a link for that sometime during the day on Wednesday. At 7.30 on Wednesday, will be the Church Council meeting, also via Zoom. So, um, some people asked me about an email that came from Carl Weiner. It is legitimate. Um, I don't, I'm not really at liberty to discuss why he sent the email or anything else, but to say it is legitimate, it's not a hacker, and feel free to delete it. It won't, it won't uh, cause any problems either way. Every week, I get uh, an email from the Church Humor Newsletter. Um, it's written by a gentleman by the name of Drew Dyke. And he's a very humorous fellow, which is why he writes the Church Humor Newsletter. And he sent one yesterday that I really, I really liked. And it's called Tips for Christian Influencers. Each day, people approach me with a burning question. Drew how did you become such a huge Christian influencer? While these people may be imaginary, I'd still like to answer the question for you. Can you believe this newsletter is free? The first tip to becoming a Christian influencer is to master the subtle name drop. I actually learned this one from my good friend, Rick Warren. Let me demonstrate. Oh wait, I just did. That's how natural it's become. I only wish my pal Billy Graham was still around to see my progress. The second move, publicly complain about how busy you are with ministry opportunities. This makes you look important. The key is to make the ministry opportunities sound like a really big deal. For example, I could go on social media and write about how Today, I hung out with my kids and had a backyard barbecue with the neighbors. Or I could post something like this. Spoke to a group of young people today, then spearheaded a community outreach effort. Ministry is exhausting. Sounds much more impressive, right? Next, name your ministry after yourself. I can't really take credit for this one. Everyone at Drew Dick Ministries played a role in coming up with it. The beauty of starting your own ministry is that all of the top positions are up for grabs. I remember a guy who slipped me a business card for his, the ministry he started. Guess who was the president, founder, and CEO? I resisted asking him if he was also the janitor. Anyway, there you have it. All my secrets for becoming a Christian influencer. See you at the top. That one made me chuckle. So um, a lot of people have inquired about turkeys and what the story was with the turkeys. So I'll see if I can make it as quick as brief as possible. Um, Cher had several hundred frozen turkeys donated to them before their, um, their holiday drive, their holiday basket drive. They had 
they had quite a few actually, and then they had a couple hundred left over after the drive, after everyone had gotten one. And they were stored at the Milford High School and at the Jacques School. And they got notified, Chris Jansen, who is the executive director of SHARE, um, got notified by the schools that they had to get those turkeys out of there because the schools were getting large food orders from the government supplemental food program. So on Friday, a bunch of members of the board got together and we moved a couple of hundred turkeys. They're butterball turkeys. They're all right around 12 pounds. They're all frozen. They have never been defrosted. They're available to anyone who wants one. We have about at least a dozen left. We had 35 and now we're down to about, about a dozen, maybe a few more than that. But um, you are welcome to come to the church and take a turkey. If you want more than one, awesome. Um, we've given away quite a few already and people have been trickling in ones and twos to get their ashes and to take a turkey. So please feel free. They have never been defrosted. They are perfectly safe. And they're kind of unusual in that they can be cooked from frozen. They come in a roasting bag, sealed in a roasting bag already. You take it out of the opening package and it's in a roasting bag with the instructions right on the top of it. Put it in the oven for about three hours and it comes out perfect. Uh, Diane Barney Parker, Scott and Carol Whittier and Verna and I each had one this weekend and they did came come out perfect. So don't hesitate. They've never been defrosted. Come and get one. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. So please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And you might want to throw in a pray for our Red Sox. Things are progressing. I got my second shot on Saturday, um, but you still have to wear a mask because you can still spread the virus, even though you're, uh, you have the antibodies against it. But things are progressing. Take some time to enjoy each other. Take some time with your Bible. Take some time to spend in Lenten reflection. And until we see each other again, Take good care of yourselves. God bless.